Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, Williamsburg introduction of our native Italian earth set. Here we are in our uh, workshop space. We've looked at this set a couple times before, and we're going to do it again under new light in our new location uh, so that you can see all the subtlety and beautiful color that this set has to offer. My name is Greg. I'm a materials and application specialist for Williamsburg, and uh, I'm I'm happy to be here. So uh, let's get started. We'll look down at the table here and take a view of this uh, beautiful new set. So here is the, uh, the native Italian earth set. It's got f 10 colors in here, which range from a natural Italian terra verde to uh, Italian black Roman earth and a, a number of uh, hues in between. We have the Italian lemon ochre, the Italian yellow ochre, Italian pizzoli earth, terra rosa, pompe red, rosso veneto, orange ochre, and green ochre. So we're gonna look at these, we'll knife them around, uh, we'll show you some mixtures and some tints so that you can see what these uh, colors have to offer. Now be sure to put your comments in the chat and if you want to see any particular mixtures uh, of this uh, range here, let us know and then uh, toward the end we'll try to circle back around and make some of those uh, mixtures right here on camera. So let's start with um, a couple of the colors from this grouping that are not in that uh, middle red range. We'll, we'll go with the terra verde, the lemon ochre, the yellow ochre and the, um, the other ochre colors here so that you can see what they have to offer. We're going to knife these over this black line. Uh, this is the terra verde. This is the only color of the group here that falls into a transparent um, range. It's got a cool look to it but it is beautifully transparent. You can see all that white reading through and over that black line. Um, it has a relatively low tinting strength, which can be really beautiful when making mixtures or trying to tweak colors a little bit. And uh, because it's so transparent, you can use this in any number of uh, glazing applications or scumbles if you wanted to adjust color. The lemon ochre is one of the brightest ochre colors we have in the palette. We have a, a, a 50 or so um, earth colors, and the lemon ochre is the brightest yellow we have going. You can see that it kind of glows through. These are all semi-opaque here. And I don't know if you can hear it, but let me... You can hear a little bit of the grind in there. All the colors from here on are semi-opaque and they all are of the medium grind. Let's see if we can show you that a little bit. I think on the cards that we'll show you here in a minute, you'll be able to see that grind a little bit better. It just has a little uh, bit of the pigment um, coarseness there. And you can feel that in when you're moving the colors around and when um, the color dries, it, it has a satiny look to it which is nice, and it's different than a, a really fine color, which dries to a more of a glossy sheen, you know, and it reflects the light off the surface. These colors are more of a satin sheen, and they, they draw the light in, almost like velvet. And so you can get a, uh, an interesting, uh, almost matte look on the surface. So I just did the yellow ochre. It's got more of a green quality than the, than the lemon ochre and um, it's a little darker, a little browner, cooler yellow ochre. This is the orange ochre, which is a blended color. And look at that glow underneath there. So in, in our terminology, we call the, the thick application, like this, the mass tone. And then when we pull it tight, we call that the undertone. The undertone in this orange ochre really does start to glow and look so very beautiful. This is a, a PBR7, and which is a, a natural iron oxide. It was like a brown mixed with a, uh, a natural yellow. Okay, And then this next color, the green ochre, 
is similar, similar um, natural iron oxide, the PBR7, mixed together with a, uh, a natural yellow. Right, so that's kind of, it's not really green, of course. That's a, that's a little bit of a stretch, but in comparison to its orange friend here, it does kind of take on a little bit of a green look. And you'll see in the, in the tint shortly that it looks rather neutral, which could be interpreted as a, uh, as a greenish kind of quality. And then finally, we have the uh, Italian black Roman earth. This is a lovely black color. It's a fast drying color and relative to our other blacks, it has a very warm quality to it. So let's say you have a Mars or a lamp black or an ivory black on your palette and you wanted to differentiate that from, um, from uh, another black, this would be a good one to select as a warm variety of black that you could bring into the palette. Okay, so there's those colors. I'm going to just scooch this to the side a little bit here. That camera view is perfect. And then we'll bring in some, um, some of the cards with the tints on it. As mentioned, the, um, the Italian Terra Vert has a very low tinting strength. That means when you add that white into it, what we're looking at here is the mass tone of the Terra Vert with a 10 to 1 um, tint with titanium white. One part Terra Vert to 10 parts titanium white. You could see that it doesn't move that titanium much, but gives it a, a sort of creamy mint quality. Okay. So that's, uh, that's one of those nice things about a color like Terra Verde. If you wanted to tweak a brighter green or you wanted to tweak a, uh, a yellow just a little bit into that green direction, you can use a color like this to move something gently towards your goal. This is the Italian lemon ochre tint. And let's just put it right next to the uh, Italian lemon ochre there, next to the Italian yellow ochre rather. This has a little bit more of an orangey quality, which you can pick up on the camera here. I'm so happy to see. I hope that it reads on your screen as well. Darker mass tone, but a little bit warmer and um, more orange in the tint. This is slightly weaker in its tinting strength and more on the yellow side of things. So I'm not sure if that's, uh, you know, maybe this would be interpreted as cooler, but... Um, it looks more orange. So I'm going to say more orange, more pure in its yellow tint here. Okay. And uh, these colors are, are great for taking a brighter yellow and then modifying it down. So let's look at some mixtures here with these colors real quick. So this is a, a Cad Lemon, for example. And I just put some of that Italian uh, lemon ochre in there in a little bit of a stepped gradient. You can see how that lemon ochre, bright and cool on its own, starts to transition into a middle yellow that's a little bit more neutral when you add that uh, lemon ochre in there. This is the kind of thing that you can do with these earth colors. And there's so much variety, even in this limited palette here, uh, for modifying your the other colors on the palette. And while we are here looking at um, these um, close-ups, let's look at the Italian terra verde mixed together with the Italian lemon ochre. So we have these two colors coming together here in this card, and it brings you into this really nice uh, warm green there. And again, you can see the grind of that pigment a little bit on the card. See the gloss of the laminated card and then the satin sheen of the, of the paint and it'll dry like that, giving you a beautiful matte, slightly satin sheen. All right. Here's the two browns on the palette, the orange ochre and the green ochre. Again, you can see the tint strength there. Um, Beautiful for uh, modifying reds and making uh, creamy pinks and uh, peach type colors. Okay, so let's move on to some of these red colors in the palette. I'm going to scooch this one over and I'm going to come in and we'll look at the um, 
the Pompe Red, the Rosso Veneto, the Pizzuli Earth, and the Terra Rosa. I had to put little notes here for myself because I, I, I was afraid I would uh, lose track of these reds when they're side by side like this. Now these colors are pretty similar to one another, but they're different in the way they tint and they're different in the way that they uh, can modify color. This little section of the, the set here is for folks who are very oriented towards subtle mixtures and modifying colors in ways that are just um, very slight and um, <clears throat> gently stepped. I don't know how to say that, but you know, subtle mixtures is what these colors are all about. The Pompeii Red is like brick red. It's a gorgeous red. I'm not sure if this is mined in the Pompeii region or if it's just named after <clears throat> the kind of color that you might have seen in a Pompeii fresco in one of the, one of the, the, the beautiful Pompeii villas. But this is similar to the color that you might see on some of those walls, especially when you draw it thin and begin to see the glow in that <clears throat> undertone. Excuse me, let me take a little sip here. So that's the Pompeii Red. We'll look at that tint here in a moment. The Rosso Veneto. So Veneto being a, a region in northern Italy uh, where Venice lies. And this is the closest color in this uh, Italian earth grouping to uh, like a Venetian red. It's the coolest red of the group. Okay, and as I pulled that, I felt like, huh, that's a little stiff. And um, I wanted to, to show how easy it is to modify a, an earth color, especially some of these native earths, if it's a little stiff like that. So I'm just going to take a, a, a moment here, and I'm just going to bring a dropper over with a little in, linseed oil. And I meant to drop one drop on there, so I'm just going to take a little bit of that off. One little drop of oil in this color here can take what was a little bit of a pasty, stiff uh, Rosso Finito and make it into a smooth, easy-going color that's like silk, you know? So here we go. That's kind of a beautiful thing. And I just wanted to mention that because this is the sort of thing that we do in our mixing room or that we do with our color if we need to modify something that's a little stiff. We just take and add a little bit of oil and it's off and running, and it's back to where we need it to be. Okay, the Pozzole Earth, this is a, a region in the uh, southwestern part of Italy, and it has a nice glowing orange undertone. It's a little stronger than its counterparts here, and could be used in any number of applications from portrait painting to landscape. And Terra Rosa, this is a, in, in a deep earth red. This is almost a, a burnt sienna of the group here. Kind of got a little brown vibe to it, but red enough that we're going to kind of calculate it as a, as a red color in this, in this grouping. Let's see what happens if I turn that a little bit. Yep, you can start to see that, that mass tone as I sort of face the paint into the light there. And I'm just going to slowly draw that back there. Very beautiful stuff. Um, so let's look at the tints on these. Come over here, check this out. So the Pompe Red has a, a, a very pink tint when you add the titanium white in there. It's a pink, muted rose color. It has a, a nice uh, orangey brick red mass tone. And the tint is beautiful for portrait palettes and things like that. This has become a real standard on my, on my palette. The Rosso Finito, uh, like a Venetian red, it's a little bit of a cooler, a little bit of a cooler color. You have your, your warm pink over here. This Rosso Veneto is going, definitely going cool. You can see by the, um, the amount of color that gets mixed in that this is a little bit of a weaker color than the Pompeii Red. 
Pizzoli Earth. A little bit more neutral than the both of them, but hedging, hedging toward a, a little bit of an orange vibe, where this has a pink uh, expression, this is heading toward purple, this has a little bit of an orange feel to it. And you can see it in the mass tone. It reads like a more orange red there. And then finally, we're looking at the Terra Rosa. This is the most neutral of the three. It is, uh, you know, the color that you're going to reach to if you just want to knock stuff back that, uh, you know, your, your, anything in your green-blue category that you want to neutralize, this might be a good color to reach to in order to modify those. But a great uh, neutral gray almost right here. And I feel like I'm a little crooked there. Sorry, folks. So that's a, 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 a little view of the tints that these can, these can bring you. In terms of the, the Venetian red, it reminded me of um, our Spanish earth. We don't have a Venetian red in Williamsburg, but we do have this beautiful uh, natural iron oxide that has a very purple look to it. And the Spanish earth... Um, Where's the light? There's the light. The Spanish Earth is a little bit of a smoother uh, consistency, but man, it is just a really dark purple natural Earth that mutes out to this um, almost bluish purple tint. So I took some of the uh, the Rosso Venito and mixed it together with some of the uh, Italian Black Roman Earth and was able to get something that that mimicked a little bit without that beautiful red purpley quality there, mimicked a little bit of the Spanish earth or a darker Venetian red and gave us a little bit of that similar tint. Okay, and then I put a little bit more white in it and was able to bring it a little closer to that Spanish earth tint there. Okay, so this set could really you know, be used to modify some of these colors back and forth toward, um, toward different um, um, expressions of, of, of these colors. So anyhow, I wonder if we have a couple questions or uh, some mixtures that folks want to see. Um, we have a question from YouTube. Um, okay. Luis wondered if... Um, What's the name of the burnt umber version in the set? Can you tell us that? The burnt, <clears throat> the burnt umber version in, in this set, the closest thing to a burnt umber would be the, um, the Terra Rosa. So the Terra Rosa is, well, the burnt umber in this, we don't have a, this is more like a burnt sienna. So a burnt sienna, let's put it on the table here so you can take a look. So yeah, this would, this would sort of function more like a burnt sienna. We do have a burnt umber in the Italian uh, grouping, but we don't have it in this set. Okay? Um, and do you have the color card handy for the Italian black Roman earth? Yes. Let's take a look. You know, I didn't show that to you, so I'm glad that you brought that up. So who's, who's asking this question? This is Louise on YouTube. Okay, Louise, thank you. That's, that's great. I wanted to show the Italian black Roman earth with some of the more um, uh, traditional blacks that you might have on your palette. So let's look at it next to um, ivory black over here and lamp black. So you can see how warm it is there. And look at the undertone. This is us, you know, do, doing a drawdown bar, which gives you a very uniform film, and then we scrape that bar at the end and it begins to show some of the undertone. This has that nice warmth to it. The lamp black being our coolest black really has, um, doesn't have a, a, a glorious glow down there, but it does look more cool. Look at that, that could be red as a blue almost, that lamp black, okay? So in the right context, you could probably push this in the direction of functioning like your blue, but, um, you know, in comparison to its, its other uh, uh, black sister colors, um, it's quite warm. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, warm green. We can make some... Uh, How about warm green? 
a warm green. The closest thing to a warm green we're going to get here is to play with the terra verde and the lemon ochre. Now I, I showed a little bit of a warm green here, but let's set this on the table and let's see if we can make some similar type colors. Do I have a... Can grab some mixing cards here. All right, let's use this mixing card right here. We'll put a bunch of this out. That's the lemon ochre. Terra verde. And then we'll tint this. All right, so I'm thinking that the terra verde is going to be quite a bit weaker than the lemon ochre. So actually, I'm going to take some of that back. And then I'm going to go with half this pile just to see what we can do. This is going right into it with our brightest yellow and our green product. The green's rather translucent, as we discussed. So that's a beautiful green right there. I love that. And it's kind of translucent, too. So you can see that glow underneath there. And the grind, the grind is coming through. The pigment particles are such that they're scraping against that laminated card. You can see them there. All right. That's, a, that's a, uh, a quality of Williamsburg that's pretty unique and in some cases takes getting used to. But often people start to enjoy that grind and really use it to their benefit. And it has some creative, expressive qualities to it. Let's do this. And I'm just going to take the teeniest bit of this here because I don't want to overwhelm the rest of this. Let's see if we can go one more step here. And mixing the, uh, the lemon ochre together with the black, yes, it can make a sort of neutral, very, very neutral black, or green, rather. But um, this is titanium uh, white safflower. I'm just going to mix some of that into this color here and see what we can get. This comes off like a little bit of a greenish gray. Okay, let's go right down the line here. Oh my gosh, that white is so much stronger than the green. Look at that. It swallows it right up. But you can get a sense for where it's going to bring you. Somewhere in between there and there, you might find a happy, happy place. I'm just going to bring a little bit of white over here to this green. We'll try it one more time and see what we get. So that uh, warm green request was from Helen, and then we've got another one on deck when you're ready. Okay. Oh, I like this one, Helen. This is the, uh, the, the a little bit stronger toward Terra Verde, but that looks like a beautiful minty neutral green, almost like something that you could live with on the walls, you know, of, the, of your house. But um, I feel like it's a little prettier in real life. Okay, so what, what can we do for you now? So Tammy asked about Pizzoli Red Earth or okay. another green. Oh, yes. Great idea. Let's do this. So the, uh, let me get the Pizzoli here. And I made a mixture like this. It was this one here. So this was the, uh, the Terra Verde with the Pompeii. And you see this kind of neutral brown that it creates. I'm making a mess over here. So it, let's scrape that thin so you can see if you can get a little of the glow out of there. But I love these neutrals that come with this, um, with this kind of mixture. So let's do the Pizzoli Earth with the Italian Terra Verde. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Now, this uh, red is going to be extremely powerful compared to this Terra Verde. So let's take this whole pile and just uh, a little nugget of this and see what happens. I'm actually nervous that that's a little too much, but let's go into it and see what happens with that. Oh, okay. No, it's good. Terra Verde's holding its own here. I'm going to get a little bit more. And this is the your know, classic uh, green and red neutral often turns into a brownish kind of color. And here we have this glowing 
greenish brown. That's really pretty. That would be good in a landscape. You know, if you wanted to scumble that over some foreground, foreground areas or something in the landscape. Let's see, I want to get that on the, on the light there. Yeah, can you see it? All right, I think that's kind of got a nice uh, glowing quality to it. And it would tint to a, a grayish kind of quality, I think, Helen. So, do you want to tint it? Yes, I could definitely tint it. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> we should. We should always tint it so that you can see what it's all about here. Oh, I like I'm I'm so glad that you uh, recommended that because it does have a much grayer quality than I expected. So that's really nice compared to this uh, with the Pompeii red. This had more Pompeii, re uh, Pompeii red in it uh, compared to Terra Verde. So it, it has a more of a pink warm quality to it. And then this one does have that gray, beautiful gray green uh, tint, very neutral. And then one more thing, and then we'll let you go. This is a, uh, a mixture of the Pompeii red and the lemon ochre. I just wanted to make a nice uh, bright orangey color to end on. So there you have uh, about a one part Pompeii red to four parts Italian lemon ochre. Just a lovely orange. So beautiful. Just like all the colors in this set. So um, we're, uh, we're delighted to share those with you. And thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions about this or any other uh, Williamsburg products, please email us at help at goldenpaints.com or we can be reached by calling 800-959-6543. So uh, we hope you'll join us next time and uh, we've enjoyed being with you today.